Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. There is a strange glowing ball of light in the sky. I think that's called the sun. I haven't seen that for over a week, so it's nice to see some sunshine today. Today, I'm going to be working on my giant sequoia seedlings. I planted these in June of 2021. So this is their second winter. The last winter, they kind of turned a reddish color. This winter, they're staying a nice green color. I haven't pruned them at all since I planted them. So today, I'll be doing the first work to my giant sequoias. Here is a look at the sequoias. So you can see there's a lot of variation in height. This one's growing really strongly. There's another couple over here that are growing strongly. And then I have some that are, you know, fairly weak looking. Look at this little one here. So there's a lot of variation in vigor and strength. So when I'm planting this, these trees in a forest, I've got to keep that in mind. This will be my tallest tree in the forest. This will be my second tallest, my third tallest. So I'll keep them, you know, arranged so the less vigorous ones are on the edges of the forest. And hopefully as they grow stronger and stronger, they'll kind of keep those natural proportions. I haven't done any work to these little seedlings yet other than watering, fertilizing, and some weeding. So today I'm going to tackle the pruning for the first time. And when do you prune a giant sequoia? That is the question. I looked online and most people say to prune them in the midwinter. Now you can also pluck them, you know, pluck the new growth in the summertime. But generally, you know, the hard pruning or the structural pruning should be done when they're dormant in the winter. The reason I want to prune these trees today is that you can see on the trees all the vigor is in the top of the tree. They're really, really strong and healthy. And then as you go down the tree, the lower branches are getting weaker. And they're at the point where they'll probably die off eventually. These trees do back bud. Um, if you look here, you can see some back buds on the trunk. This one has a back bud on this trunk. But generally, um, you know, once you prune these lower branches off, they don't really grow back in again. So you've kind of got to decide what height do you want to make the tree eventually? You know, do you want to grow it into a giant, giant meter tall tree or do you want to keep them small? It, it's, it's up to you uh, what size you want to grow them. Uh, these are fast growing trees, so to keep them very small would take a lot of maintenance, but it, it can be done. I'm going to begin the pruning now and you can see the height of the tree is this tall but it has a skinny trunk. So I, I want to grow it taller to thicken up the trunk down here. Uh, I think my eventual height for these trees will be sort of a medium to large size tree so I think that's a good practical size for these giant sequoias. So I've got a natural vertical leader here that I'm going to leave alone and just let it shoot up it'll get more side branches. So eventually, you know, if it gets too tall, you can prune it back and replace the leader with a side branch. So I'm going to prune them back. And if I look at the branch, um, I'll show you a view from above. Here is a look at a typical branch. So it comes out and then it divides here. So it divides from one to three. And then this leader divides here again one it's sort of staggered but it divides so I have a couple of options I can prune the tip off like right here like that so it reduces the length of that branch so you can see its length and then I can prune the tips off here and here so I've kept my branch it goes from one divides into two and I've shortened it up so it makes it much more compact so that's one option you can do for your branching. The other option is you can prune it off quite far back, just leaving like a single stub. So here's another branch back here. So I will just prune it, hard prune it right back to here, leaving no branches on it. So this kind of pruning where I just leave a single stub here is probably more suitable for the apex of the tree where you're pruning it back hard you know, reducing that vigor in the apex. And the kind where you leave some branches on, like here, is probably more suitable as you go down lower in the tree. 
So I'm going to continue pruning now. So here's one I can prune quite far back. I've got some branching starting way back here. So I can take this off. Like that. And I've got one that goes vertical here. I'll remove that one. So I've got my two branches now and then I'll prune those back short. Like that. So even though this is my apex here, you can see I have a center bud here in the middle. So I'm going to prune the surrounding branches shorter. So I'll prune them back to here quite short leaving little stubs. So it's very similar to pruning a juniper. This one I'm going to prune short. Back to there. And I hope I'm doing this right because, you know, this is a new species for me. And this is the first time I've ever pruned a giant sequoia. So this one I'm going to leave some branching. I'll find out. Um, I have two styles of pruning here. I'll see what works out the best. It is a bit of an experiment. So you can see I'm getting this apex pruned back quite, quite tight now. So that's looking quite nice. I'll continue going down the tree now and I'm keeping in mind my conical shape. Smells nice when you prune these. So as I go down the tree, the branches are getting longer. I'm getting, I'm being more cautious with my pruning, leaving more foliage at the bottom. Here's one sticking straight up. That. So I'm doing a little directional pruning at the same time. And you, you can also pinch these if you don't want to prune them with scissors. You just grab the tip and pinch it. It's uh, you know, just like doing a juniper. So that tree is getting pruned up quite nicely. I hope I've left enough vigor in my bottom branches to keep them growing. Yeah, so I think the first sequoia is pruned back. It's not so large a tree now. And that should, uh, should grow quite nicely in springtime. I'm going to continue pruning up all the trees in the forest into that, you know, fairly tight conical form. So here I go. They smell so good. I used to have this whole seed tray full of giant sequoias, but I gave a lot of them away. I, I thought, you know, I don't need a whole bunch of them. And I, I think you can grow these from cuttings too. If you plant, you know, your cuttings, you can uh, propagate them that way. So I think I have more than enough I need for a forest here because you know they'll grow larger and they'll need space I can't have them this close together it'll have to you know I'll have to spread my forest out giving each tree room to grow Do a little bit of tip pinching here I think 
that's got my second tree pruned up here. It's looking quite nice. I hope I'm pruning this correctly. There's not a lot of information online about pruning giant sequoias. You know, how much to take off, when to do it. So this is kind of a bit of an experiment for me and I hope I do it correctly because I really want these trees to survive and thrive and do really well. I've always wanted to grow a giant sequoia bonsai. And not because it's challenging, but because they're beautiful trees. They're, uh, you know, some of the most beautiful trees in the world. I'm doing a lot of directional pruning, you know, removing shoots that are sticking straight up kind of sorting the branches out. I think that'll be important for the future. If these trees survive nicely to kind of, you know, start establishing that beautiful branch structure. Also doing a lot of hard pruning in the apex. Big cut there. Yeah, some of these trees, some of the lower branches have died off. They've just you know, got starved for light and vigor, and they just died off. That's okay, they were really low down anyway. So I'm trying to keep these trees above freezing. Uh, last year they did drop below freezing a couple of times, but not by much. Maybe minus 5C at the most in the dead of winter. You just can't keep the greenhouse <laughs> warm enough to keep it above freezing when it gets really, really cold outside. I mean, you could, but your heating bills would be ridiculous. Now, I think I'm a little vigorous in the top of this tree still. I'll have to prune it back a little harder. I'm trying to keep that conical shape. Pinching here. It's looking better. I think this forest is going to look quite small by the time I've finished pruning today. Really taking them back. Not in height, but just in uh, you know getting that conical shape. So I'm not touching any of the vertical central leaders. I'm leaving those alone to grow tall and mighty. Just pruning all the branches. When I visited the Montreal Botanical Gardens, they had a giant sequoia tree um, that they got from Ryan Neal, and it had already been pruned. So that was back in December, early December. So it had already been pruned back. You know, all the branches were quite short, all the new growing tips. So. I was kind of encouraged seeing that. I knew, you know, they can take some good pruning. And I think that was my first time ever seeing a giant sequoia bonsai. I don't think I've ever seen one before. Yeah, they're just not that common, a bonsai up here in Canada. It has a very strong kind of, almost like a sour citrus smell. But it also has kind of a, an evergreen smell too, like a piney smell. Interesting. It smells nice. I really like it. 
Yeah, these big trees, these big bushy trees are definitely getting pruned back. Here is a look at everything I pruned off my giant sequoia seedlings. Quite a bit of foliage. Let's have a look at the forest now. Here is a look at the forest. So you can see the trees are much more conical shaped. They're a lot more compact. I kind of took it easy on them. I didn't exactly know how far I can take them back safely. So I, I maybe erred on the cautious side, leaving the branches a little longer. And I'll try and learn. I'll see how they recover from this. If the pruning was successful or if I set the trees back too far, we'll see what happens in spring. I will be repotting these trees in spring also, arranging them into a pleasing arrangement. So there's kind of some close-ups of the trees. Yeah, a lot of them are planted too close together. They're a little crowded. So that'll be nice to get them out of this broken up seed tray full of weeds into some really nice bonsai soil, weed free, a nice pot, and get the forest underway. It took me just over an hour to prune up the forest. Now I'll give it a good watering. All right, here I go with the water. So it's important to keep them moist over the winter. Don't let your soil dry out. And don't let them dry out at all in the summer either. They've got to have moist soil at all times. If you let them dry out even once, you could kill off all the fine roots and the trees may not make it. Okay, that should be good. It was nice to be able to do the very first work on my sequoias since I planted them as seeds. So in spring I'll be repotting them putting them in a nice bonsai pot and arranging the trees so they all have a bit of room and arranging them in a, a pleasing uh, layout. So that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>